Horizon League Tournament victory. And the men's team is in action as we speak right now. It is halftime in Cleveland State as the 10 seed Colonials take on the one seed Vikings. They are down 36 to 28. What are your thoughts so far in that game? So they are down early, and at least at halftime it is. So, I mean, it's been close all year with this team. You never, you never know once the calendar turns to March. So I think they definitely still have a shot to come back in this game. Definitely, we've been seeing good ball movement there. It's kind of bad shots by the Colonials early, early yep. on. The Vikings have been able to rebound well, take advantage of that. But a lot of clock issues have led to that game being delayed early on because yep. of the women's side of the bracket and also clock issues as well. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's definitely something they can't control at all. Some, something that you gotta you got to be resilient in that kind of thing. I mean, it's something you don't control. It's, it's definitely something you don't want to see in this game. Now, Michael, the women's basketball team was also in action earlier today, and you have the score of that. What happened in that one? So it was not the same as the men's game. It ended up being a 72-41 loss. The Colonial season ends today against the number one seed, IUPUI. IUPUI, a very, very strong team. I mean, it's, it ha it's, they've dominated the Colonials all year. The Jaguars, Macy Williams, she had a big day today. It's, it's definitely so, it's something. The season ended on a very sour taste in their mouth. Definitely a sour taste in the mouth of the Colonials to fall in that one. We saw them lead for most of the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Late three by the Jaguars put them ahead to end the quarter. Unable to pick up the momentum throughout the rest of the game, which led to the near 30-point defeat at Definitely. the hands of the number one seed. Now, moving on to the, earlier in the bracket for the Colonials, they were looking for the first win ever in Horizon League victory over a team in Horizon League tournament play in a team that they have swept previously in Purdue-Fort Wayne. Let's see how that one fared. And it was also going to be, there we see Coach uh, Charlie Bisaglia back looking for his 100th career victory as the Colonials head coach. He's been absent for quite a while, Michael, but let's get this game started here. Uh, Nina Gustin inbound here. Esther Casito, nice dribble move here, and bang, that's a three. Colonials go up quickly. Now watch how you play defense. Pickpocket, Natalie Villafor. She's going to run the fast break perfectly to Esther Casito. Nice little pump fake there, and that makes it 7 0 Colonials, but the Mastodons will not go away. Aubrey Stove gives it to Rit Ott, and she'll hit a three, and the Mastodons make it 7 5. Now the Colonials move around. Sol Castro, nice dribble move here. Look at the fan down here. He won an and one, but a great way to end the quarter. Now the Mastodons look around, another three here, and they're clawing, clawing right back in. But Esther Castillo to Morse, that's a three. The Colonials continue to extend their lead. Here we go now, Villafort to Sol Castro. That's a great shot, was not called a foul. And the Mastodons moving around here, nice ball move it way downtown. That was from near Pittsburgh where she shot that one. But Mackenzie Amelia to Esther Castillo, that's another three. Colonials begin to pull away, but the Mastodons continue to fight. Another three for them as we enter the fourth quarter in a close game in the UPMC Event Center. Now look at this passing by RMU. Great job. Corner three, and that one's in. Colonials continue to not go down, to not fall apart, and Mackenzie Amelia is going to ice the game here. A little ice, a nice dribble move, and one. That seals the 100th career victory and the Colonials' first ever win in Horizon League tournament play, 70 to 56. And, and Colby, you're right. You, you just mentioned it right now. Coach Pisaglia got his 100th career win with his with before with his absence. Coach Pisaglia, he's been here since 2003, and so he, he was an assistant coach. He was promoted to associate coach in 2008. It was it's definitely something. It's good for him to be back. A long time since he's been on the sideline. Been here for a long time. 100th 100 career win, and it's definitely great to see that happen. Definitely, and now it's time for joining me is one of the RMU, RMU Sanctuary Media and Colonial Sports Network's very own women basketball analyst, Sam Goldberg. Sam, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Colby. I'm ready to kind of break down the uh, game that we just had between IUPUI and your Robert Morse Colonials. Now definitely going into that game, what is your reaction to the Colonials game and how the season ended for them tonight? Well, going into the game, uh, I, kind of, I felt a little bit of, I felt confident for the Colonials going into this game. Uh, you know, the first quarter, as you guys stated earlier, you know, they started off strong. They had the lead. They were playing well. Transition defense was great. Then they were getting, and they were off and running on the offense as well. But IUPUI did hit that late three to take the lead and IUPUI, just did not look back as Macy Williams, the most dominant player in the Horizon League, absolutely shredded the Colonials' interior defense, and that's that was ultimately what led to the demise for the Colonials. Always tough when you're playing the number one team seed in the tournament. The Colonials were unable to continue that momentum they had in the first quarter. But speaking of Macy Williams, who is your player of the game tonight? 
Well, I'm going to have to go with Macy Williams uh, for IUPUI. Um, again, 11th career double-double, or 11th double-double on the season, excuse me. Macy Williams is just a dominant player uh, in the interior. It was tough for Robert Morris with Noah Shia Klopfenstein, so Phoenix Gideon had a tall task ahead of her tonight with Macy Williams, but Macy Williams proving why she's one of the best players in the Horizon League tonight. Phoenix Gideon had an excellent season, but unable to continue to stop Macy Williams. But what's next for the Colonials? Honestly, I really like where the Colonials are heading. You know, first season, first season in the Horizon League, they didn't have the best season. You know, single digit wins on the year. And, you know, there wasn't, there was a lot of questions going into this year. And I feel like the uh, team really rallied this year. Um, you know, Castillo had a really big year. Sol Castro had a bit of a down year, but really, but Castillo really filled the role that Castro was missing. And, you know, this team really rallied together. And, you know, they had coach, they had coach Biscaglia out for half, over half the season. Uh, coach Scott Schneider really stepped in and did a fantastic job while Biscaglia was out. Um, you know, looking on to next year, though, uh, really, I could we could see the same starting five here. You know, Kaufenstein will be back, but really, it all depends on uh, Castillo if she decides to go play professional basketball at overseas at Spain in her hometown, or if she decides to come back for her extra year of eligibility. That will that's something to keep an eye on for next year. But you know, Gideon's going to be pretty strong next year. You have Simone Morris that can fill the role for Esther Castillo. So I really look forward to watching this team. Look, look for the Colonials to be top five next year in the Horizon League. That's a hot take here on Colonial Sports Center. But Sam, thanks for joining me. And when we come back, we're going to keep it on the hardwood here on Colonial Sports Center and keep you updated on the men's basketball game versus Cleveland State right here on Colonial Sports Center. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back and change I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Now, as we said earlier in the show, the men's basketball team is in action against Cleveland State. But to get there, they went to Youngstown State in Ohio to defeat the Penguins, 77 to 73. Uh, Khalil Spear, seven for eight with 13 rebounds, 19 points. Ignat Cheeks, three for eight, uh, five assists and 12 points. And you just really saw the Colonials continue. They jumped out to a 20 point lead, unable to continue to keep their foot on the gas, but able to have a lead and they built on that to win and get their first win Horizon League play to move on to the next round. And while the Colonials were in, uh, on the road, CSN was actually in Youngstown. Our very own Nate Breisinger has the details in Youngstown, Ohio. The Robert Morris men's basketball program has had a storied history with the nearby Youngstown State Penguins. The teams have tipped off 17 times with each being a key matchup, but number 18 was the biggest game ever between the two schools. This time, Horizon League tournament implications were in effect as the Colonials made the trek to the Beagley Center in search for their first ever Horizon League tournament victory. Colonials head coach Andy Tool has performed well once the calendar turns to March, and he was hoping for a similar fate against the Gwyns and their passionate fans. RMU and YSU began the game with their fair share of trade-off buckets. During the back portion of the first half, the Colonials began to make some noise on offense. The Colonials were clicking offensively as they went 50% from the floor in the first half compared to a mere 33% for Youngstown. 
Arm, you ended up taking a nine-point lead in the halftime, hoping to turn up the pressure coming out of the locker room. While the offense turned loose in the second half, the Colonials also locked down on defense. The Penguins were looking lost on their home court, so Army made sure to turn up the heat. The Colonials were flexing their muscles as they built their lead to 20 points, and the Colonials were driven by key scoring, including a statement slam from Enoch Cheeks as the Colonials were on the brink of their second victory at YSU in as many weeks. The Penguins, however, inched closer as the clock wore down, making it a game late. But some key free throws helped seal the deal for the Colonials, as Andy Toole and the Colonials clinched their first Horizon League tourney win as they lived to see another day. For Colonial Sports Center, I'm Nathan Breisinger. Thank you that, for that, Nate. Well, well, we did say before that Coach Pataglia got his milestone 100 victory. Now, Coach Tool also got his milestone victory as well with his 200th career win. As you can see, he got his 200th career win on Tuesday night. Coach Tool has been here since 2007 as an assistant coach and has been here ever since. He's been, he's been to the tournament once. He would have made it in 2020 because the COVID got canceled. However, he, uh, it looks like he's going to be back here another year. Coach King actually announced yesterday that he will return for another year here at Robert Morris. Thank you for that, Michael. Now, the, going to high school basketball, w, the WPIL semifinals were here at Robert Morris last weekend. Ethan Morrison has a story on that. The UPMC Event Center hosted five Whippeal semifinal games this past weekend. Quaker Valley and Lincoln Park kicks things off Saturday afternoon. And it was an intense battle in the boys' 4A bracket. But Quaker Valley pulled out the 74-63 to victory to punch their ticket to the Whippeal 4A title game this weekend. Now, Marcus Frank scored a game-high 27 points in the Quakers' winning effort. The middle game of Saturday's slate Featured Upper St. Clair and North Allegheny, part of the girls' Whippeal 6A bracket. Upper St. Clair took an 11 point lead into the locker room at the half. But North Allegheny came, came storming back in the third quarter, thanks to Jasmine Timerson, who had a buzzer beater three to knock the game up at 36 to end the third quarter. But Upper St. Clair's Riley Colloquay put the team on her back, scoring the Panthers' last nine points of the game, pushing them over North Allegheny by a final score. 48 to 44. The final game of Saturday's slate featured the other half of the of the girls 6A bracket as Mount Lebanon would do battle with Bethel Park to find out who would play up for St. Clair in the 6A finals. And it was all Lebo as they controlled the pace of play throughout the entire game coasting to a 52 to 33 victory. Then the calendar turned to Monday as Avonworth and South Allegheny kicked off Monday's doubleheader. South Allegheny had control for most of the game, but the Lopes came back in the end as Peyton Faulkner sent Avonworth to the Whippeal Finals on a game-winning layoff to beat South Allegheny 46-43. The night cap of the evening in the event center featured two high-octane teams in Gateway and Newcastle. The Hurricanes could not be stopped from the on the arc, going 7 for 18 during the game. Mike Wells led the way in scoring for Newcastle with 23 points, including two slams in the fourth quarter. They head to the Whippeal Finals for the eighth time in 11 seasons. Now the UPMC Event Center is looking to host two more games in the high school in the high school region as they look to host two PIAA C tournament games, but those have yet to be confirmed. For Colonial Sports Center, I'm Ethan Morrison. Thank you for that, Ethan. Now, we, now, if you want to see more content like that, you can check out Colonial Sports Network. Our, our, own, very, our very own Nate Breitzinger had, had an opinion piece on why the Whippeal semifinals should stay at Robert Morris University. 
And from and you can also check out more RMU athletics thing at colonialsportsnetwork.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, RMU underscore CSN, and follow us on Instagram at Colonial Sports Network. Now when we come back, we have lax and track for you and top five plays are still on the way here on Colonial Sports Center. I don't remember how it started. Not today. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. <laughs> I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. As, the, as we talked about basketball a lot, let's go to the field and lacrosse. Uh, the women's lacrosse team played against Bucknell in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Let's see how they fared in that matchup. And the Colonials actually lost this one 17-6. Katie Wendell with four goals and six points. Emma, Emma Cashwell to a goal and two assists for the Bison. Jenna Irwin with a hat trick on three shots on goal. Jordan Anderson had two goals and three points. Jenna Irwin is a freshman. She's leading, actually, on the team in goals. Now, as Mike was talking about the women's lacrosse team, they got their first MAC win of the season against Detroit Mercy. They're looking to keep up the momentum against Kent State. Here's a look at that game. And they were able to win it 11-8. Jackie Wolford had three goals and three shots on goals for the, flat, for the Golden Flash. Abby Jones had two goals and assists. Julia Hot, or Cot, Cotwiss had a goal and two assists. And Jero O'Bree had two goals and three points. Now joining me is Colonial Sports Center's very own women's lacrosse expert, Cameron Cariola. Cam, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Colby. Now, who has stood out thus far for the team this year? Well, this year has to be Jenna Irwin. She has been on fire to start this season. Coming in, she has nine goals already and one assist, ten points in four games, or five games, excuse me. And the one game versus Detroit Mercy, she scored five goals, which was one away from a all-time freshman uh, goals in a game record. And she's just been outstanding. I've talked to Coach Silva after the game, and all I get from her uh, is high praise about Jenna Irwin. She says Jenna does everything that she asks for and more. Now, we saw the team struggle in non-conference play, not being able to pick up a single win in that. But in MAC play, they're 2-0 so far. So what's been the di biggest difference between non-conference play and MAC action? I think it's their opponents, really. You play, they played Ohio State, Canisius, and Bucknell. All three of those schools are very good, and they have two more non-conference games this year facing Liberty, who is 2-2 two and two right now, coming off of a 17-8 to eight win against Old Dominion. But just MAC isn't as high as a level as the other teams that they're playing. But, you know, it's not bad to face those other teams because they say uh, steel iron sharpens iron or steel sharpens sharpens steel, excuse me. And when you play difficult teams such as Ohio State and Bucknell and Canisius, that's only going to make the team better. Yeah, definitely when you play up to those higher competitions at a mid-major school like Robert Morris, you get to see how tough your team really is and how good they are. And we've seen that though they're not the best, they're able to compete with the big schools. But... What do they need to do now to start a win streak moving on in this season? I think they just need to keep learning, keep playing games, getting used to each other. She, uh, Coach Silva says the team is a very young team and th that they have gone from a team of a superstar to a team where they're all uh, contributing to the team. Because 
last year we had the Gandy twins and then uh, Cleo Kerr, and this year it's they're very young. Uh, the leading goal scorer is a freshman, and they're just going to keep on needing to learn and develop as a team. I think the first step of agreeing with you is development there. You have a lot of young players on this roster, as you were saying, and that's going to continue to, consistency will continue to grow as the year continues. But Cameron, thank you for joining me uh, on this discussion. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you guys for that. The, the track and field was up and running once again. They were at the Horizon League Conference Championships in Youngstown. Let's see how they fared in this one. Yes, Yessi Valencia won gold in the weight throw, 18.86 meters. Katora Hunter right behind her on the podium in second. Ahsoka Tende was third in two events in discus and shot put. Lauren Chappelle in the pentathlon in the long jump was third. And fourth in the high jump, fourth in the 800, and fourth in the shot put, making her fourth in the pentathlon with 3,286 points. Good uh, performance for them. Now, thank, now we're going to send it to commercial break. Coming up next, CSC is coming. CSC Comic of the Week will be right with you. Bring it. Home. Okay. Bye, guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. Have us some one on one. Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry. I'll, I'll see you later. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Sports Center, as we said throughout the show today, we're going to continue to update you through the Cleveland State RMU men's quarterfinal action in uh, Cleveland. And right now it's 49-37 Vikings. They just started off the second half with about 15 minutes left to play. And that, hopefully the Colonials can continue to come back. We'll keep you updated with that one. Definitely. It's a 12-point game. Definitely not out of, out of the air yet. I mean, it's definitely a lot of time. That 15 minutes is an eternity in college basketball, especially during this calendar month. Now, speaking of college basketball, it's time to look at the top five plays of the week here at Robert Morris. Let's get that for you right here. All right, top five plays of the, of the week with Michael Deemer. This is usually a very fun segment. So we'll kick it off with number five. This is men's basketball at Wright State. Khalil Spear going to give it to Michael Green the third. He's going to oop it and drop by Spear, but gets the rebound, puts it back up, and slams it home. Nice play by Khalil Spear, though. Definitely. Khalil Spear is definitely one of the most consistent people on this roster. Heading up to number four now. Now this is a good ball movement for the Colonials. It's Castillo to Morris to Castro who lays it in. It's a 15 point lead. It was a win against them, against them in Purdue for a win. Here's Morris again to Castro. Beautiful Ball play movement in there. was excellent in that one. Was a big reason why the Colonials won that game. But moving over to number three now. Watch the fast break here. It's a nice pass here to uh, Matt Mayers, and he'll slam it home. Cloners go up 20 here. Here's another view. Enoch Sheik's beautiful bounce pass, and Matt Mayers says, I'll take care of the rest. Definitely, Matt, Matt Mayers definitely surprised in that one, uh, uh, having his performance. To number two now, to, uh, you know, to Mackenzie Amelia, lay in and the foul. Count it and the foul. The loudest the event center was all night long. A beautiful lay in, touch off the glass with a kiss, if you will, Mackenzie Amelia. A two-pointer. A career high, 14 points from Mackenzie yep. Mealy. But number one, watch Enoch Cheeks go here. Beautiful triple move all the way to the hoop and slams it home. Ooh. Enoch Cheeks, what a play. Definitely one of the highlight reels from that game. Definitely a great week of Colonial action. But, Michael, is there anything else we need to talk about here? I, de I definitely uh, got to say, there's a comic of the week here 
at Youngstown State, if we if we can run that for you. Comic of the week here. One of the one of the probably the most lighter side of this kind of of this uh, of CSC. Here's a fan here at Youngstown, really getting into it, talking to the ref, saying, I'll, "It's like I can do better than that." Uh, it's like, oh man, what what is that kind of call? It, it's definitely uh, one of the more passionate people at Youngstown, Ohio. Yeah, uh, Michael, the tournament's sponsored by Keeps. I think this guy could use a little bit of that. <laughs> but also, just word from our producer, he says this is you in 20 years. Oh, I don't know about that. That's kind of, kind of a roast, I guess. Definitely, like I, I take that a little heart, a yeah. little to heart. That's a little. A little hurtful, yeah, but it is a little hurtful. Youngstown full of passionate fans. We've seen that before. Uh, when I went there, someone pretended to punch me in the head. So, <laughs> Youngstown is definitely an interesting place to have some fans there. But let's get get a look at the games to watch this weekend. Uh, I'll go first here, and I got or this is yours. Yeah, Michael. this is yeah, this is me. RMU will play against Akron at Akron at the Infocision Stadium in Akron, Ohio. They last played last year on April 17th. Jenna Irwin, like we said before, she leads the team in goals with nine. And also Noelle Boyd, she also leads the team in, with nine goals. She has three assists and 12 points. Akron one, uh, is a very tough opponent for this Colonial team this early in the year. What about you, Colby? What is your game to watch? Well, I'm going to keep it with the women's sports here and go over to the softball team as they're going to hit the, hit the Pacific Northwest and tank off the number seventh ranked Washington Huskies. It will be March 8th at 9 p.m. Husky Softball Stadium in Seattle, Washington. The last time the, the teams have never played before, the first time the teams will ever play. Danny Vitekas is 2-0 in the year with 2.21 ERA, 20 strikeouts, and a complete game shutout when she started the year. Sammy Reynolds leading the team in a batting average there. So definitely an interesting game. See if the Colonials can hit the top tier of softball. Definitely. This team has this team is off to the best start in program history, playing against a very tough opponent in Washington in the Pacific Northwest. Definitely a tough opponent for this team. Danny Vitekis has been amazing this year. Hopefully she can continue that kind of trend against Washington. Now we have a huge update for you in the Cleveland State RMU game. The Colonials have taken the lead 54 to 41. They're losing, excuse me. I got 54 to 44, excuse me. R incorrect information on my part there. 12.47 to go in the second half. The Colonials is marching back in that one. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, like a lot of time left. This team can definitely come back for against games. This team, it, it close, close margins all year long, and this time hopefully they can get a win in the Horizon League quarterfinals. And going, going on to Indy, yeah, Enoch Sheik has 14 points leading the game for the Colonials. He's been a huge part for the year. Uh, uh, for the Colonials th uh, this year, he's been a really, really good, good year for him. Definitely, Colonial Spear has definitely uh, been a torch, a torch on the hardwood, and uh, it's it's definitely seeming like on an up on an uphill trend to hopefully take the lead in this game. Now, with basketball winding down, what spring sports are you looking forward to? In the spring sports, like we said, so like so we said, softball, softball's been off to their best start in program history against against Washington, like you said. Tough, tough opponent, but I'm definitely excited to see how this team progresses throughout this spring season. Definitely a fun thing to go there. Upcoming games again for us. Uh, you were talking about our upcoming games here for you. Uh, softball will be taking on Portland State at 5 p.m. They'll also take on Portland State at 3 p.m. The men's lacrosse team will head over host Mercer at 12 p.m. And the women's lacrosse team will take on Liberty at 1 p.m., one of the out-of-conference games that Cam was talking about. Mm -hmm. so softball will play against Oregon State on Monday at 5 Against Washington, like you said, that will be that will be at nine o'clock, a late one, if you if you will. Three games on Wednesday: softball in Seattle, men's lacrosse against Canisius, women's lacrosse, like I said, against Akron. Noel Boyd is going to be a difference maker for the Zips. Saturday, men's lacrosse will play against the Panthers of High Point at 1 p.m. over the weekend. Definitely, with that Washington game, you can watch the Colonials and hit hit the hay and watch watch some more Army sports yep. the next day. Definitely, yeah. Now, what other spring sports are you looking forward to? We're talking about softball, lacrosse in action. They have some warm action this week, if you will. That's more of a football term. But what else are you looking forward to? I, I'm, I'm definitely going to say uh, definitely men's and women's lacrosse. Like they're they're still early in the year. I'm, I mean, like you know, you don't really know. I'll do I'll do maybe a, a little spit of stumble in non-conference play. But but in but in action, they're definitely favorites to win this conference. It's uh, the women's lacrosse team, if you will. But uh, yeah, it, it's definitely a, a conference they ha they have to they can't lose in. Yeah, that was definitely a great time hosting with you today, Michael Demer. For everybody upstairs, downstairs, this has been Colonial Sports Center.